Coal has powered human activity for over 200 years. But according to industry watchers, the COVID-19 pandemic could be its curtain call as an energy source. With so much activity on hold, demand for energy has sunk. Meanwhile, the cost of other energy sources like renewables and gas have fallen, making it cheaper to go green. Several European countries have been going without coal for record time periods. The UK has run for over a month with no, no coal energy in the grid. In Portugal, it's been nearly two. Well, let's find out more. Catherine Gutmann, the campaign director of Europe Beyond Coal, a group walking towards a coal-free future, joins us now. Thank you very much for your time. There seems to have been, over the last two months, this shift away from dirtier fossil fuels. Why has that happened? Why has it taken a pandemic for that to take place? Actually, this has been happening uh, for over the course of the last few years. Uh, uh, that's a, been a very solid trend, and the uh, lockdown has only made it obvious uh, to uh, everyone because the demand, demand has dropped even further, and coal cannot compete with renewables. Uh, anymore, but that was already a trend that we'd seen uh, uh, last year, for example, where uh, the number of hours that coal power plants have run uh, dropped by 24 percent, which is a really big fall. Uh, and we're seeing an acceleration and something that's happening in Europe, but it's happening across the world in the US is the exact same trend. Um, I mean, there so are some European countries still quite heavily dependent on coal, Poland, for, an ex for example. But what are some of the factors that are seeing countries rely less on it and changing to other alternatives? Uh, renewables uh, have become a lot cheaper to build, they're cheaper to operate, they've become a lot more efficient uh, as well, uh, and they cannot compete with coal anymore because coal has actually quite a fuel cost attached to it. Uh, it's the imported hard coal or the lignite that we're still mining in Europe. There's a CO2 price that needs to be paid for coal that renewables don't have to pay, uh, and costs for pollution to bring down the pollution because fossil fuels and coal are quite polluting. Um, and that makes renewables the better investment uh, in the uh, energy sector and it's something that a lot of investors have now realised as well. And which renewables are people turning to instead? It's uh, uh, onshore and offshore wind and solar. Uh, uh, those are the big, uh, the big winners and we've really seen also uh, record uh, um, use of uh, solar uh, and wind in our electricity grids. Um, uh, which has been really uh, quite uh, promising to see how our grids are able to handle really high share of renewables. We call this the glimpse of the postcards of the future of uh, renewables powered uh, uh, system. Countries like Germany and Poland have a high number of people working in the coal industry. Obviously, you're pushing towards a move away from coal. What about the employment of the people, you know, whose, whose livelihoods are embedded in coal as a way of powering those countries? What do you suggest as alternatives? Uh, it's, you know, it's really important to uh, make this a managed uh, exit from coal. Uh, and... Uh, there are opportunities uh, in the renewable sector, uh, so reskilling is a really important element. But if you look into the coal regions, there are a lot of alternatives that can be built. It's not just a question of uh, um, uh, renewables as an alternative. Uh, um, it's really a, a lot of different things that can be built in those, uh, in those uh, regions uh, that can provide alternatives for income. The important thing is that this is a managed uh, a managed decline, and to now also with the uh, the coal exit, uh, um, uh, and you know with with the developments that we've seen with the uh, the pandemic, uh, uh, to uh, to make this real and and really go for it. You might assume from home that sort of shifting away from dirtier fossil fuels to renewables will have a, a real tangible impact on climate change. How real is that change? Can we measure it and what does it look like? Um, the CO2 emissions have uh, uh, dropped quite, uh, uh, quite strongly and we've seen that uh, uh, drop over the last years already. Uh, and now with a pandemic, that's uh, um, even more so. What is important now is to make sure that as part of the recovery, um, uh, governments put a priority on uh, clean energy on renewables to make sure that uh, we do not see a rebound in CO2 emissions because we're recovering in the wrong way. There's a real opportunity to actually uh, build a better future for ourselves uh, and address uh, climate change as we're, uh, as we're doing that. 
Catherine Gutmann, thank you very much for speaking to us. Campaign Director of Europe Beyond Coal.